7 and 7.30 is such a difficult sort of fix because so many people have so much to do between 7 and 7.30, so. They've got little kids, especially. Yeah, and much our respect out to their kids. We'll see who's the first on, we're about to see. It says excellent connection. You know, people are uh, pretty attracted to the topic of equipment and uh, and weapons until they have to carry them. <laughs> Who's going to be first here? Hey, it's Peter Cram. Dave D just can't get enough. He's changed. His real family's in green now, despite the fact that he's in blue. Bailey's just flicked his hat onto LeBron James's bed and been told, you have no power here, you're not the droid. And Lauren has been here for the last half an hour. So we've got Noah. G'day, mate, how you going? Declan. I know a Declan Deasy. Fantastic guy. Some pretty bad injuries, but we've got Mr. Bryce, he's always here. Sabre. There's a sharp point with that one. Chopper. Brody G. Matt Man. G'day, mate. Brody, I love your uh, your icon there. Is that cash? Giuliano sticker. Chicken wings. Yes, please. Buffalo wings. Would be great for me. Jesus loves you. I hope he does. I needed him today. I love you back, mate. Jazza, how do you hope that I can catch the last part of the stream? I hope you can too. Sanchez Sanchez throws up the devil's horns. Lovely Lauren typing, but I can't hear her. Please leave a thumbs up below the screen. There we go. RB Iceberg. You know, took down the Titanic. Won't hold that against you. Sins of the Father. Jaden Harrison, nice chat before, mate. It's going okay. I've still got a hangover from the bloody headache, mate, but we're all good. Glennie Jones. Peter Cram finally graduated from high school this week. Well done. What do you do? Do you walk outside your door and throw your hat in the air? How do you do it online? Whereabouts in Australia are you, mate? Moving a career in the Australian Army. That's right. You're going to enjoy tonight then. Dave D says, how hard is it uh, to in-service transfer to Aggies? It's a tough one, mate. There's a long line. <laughs> Aaron. Hi, old regs. Jet. What is it? Billy and the Jets? No? Action. Jack. Action. Jick. From New Zealand. Andrew Starlight Stoddy. Andrew, just plain old Andrew. Emma C. Howdy, absolutely butchered my thumb today. Well, that's what you get for hitchhiking. What were you doing? Mattman decided to make my own YouTube channel, Campfire Cooking themed. It'll take over mine real quick, mate. People love that sort of stuff. He is having a, he is having a great time. He's, uh, I think he's getting a little bit nervous, old bucko, but with the thought of what's coming next, you know. Um, he's getting very close to, very close to retirement, you know. And does anyone have enough money to retire these days? How hard is it to join the tour area? Well, the line is longer than what it is to uh, Mia Khalifa's. Uh, Bands page, I guess, at the moment. No, it's difficult, mate. It's difficult because there's less people there. We'll talk about that tonight. Let's get to it. Hey, team, how are you going? I hope you enjoy the intense stares of those below. It's for in case one day I'm here by myself. Look at that. Leo, the wanker stuntman for life. We've got a cow in the paddock. And I made something just for you today. And how did I know it would be the jester? How did I know the jester would be first to put a cow in the paddock? Nuxuko! Nuxuko! I accept! Nuxuko! There you go. I made up a special one just for you, mate. When you put a cow in the paddock, you get the response. Thank you very much. Mucho respect out to you. Thank you. That was special. Hey? You didn't expect that, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> I put a little bit more effort today into the introduction as well. And what are we talking about tonight, Tim? We're talking about weapons and equipment. We're talking about the statement that we're all one army, which is not true. Because if we're all one army, we'd all be in danger. 
there is many jobs within the Australian Army that make it hard to have a career, and there's careers in the Army that are hard not to turn into jobs. Because unfortunately, the passion that we go in with, the diversity of roles, means depending on what you choose, support or actual um, combat arms, will determine whether you never play with certain toys that may have been the expectation of service that you had. And we're going to cover that in videos and introdu in introduction. And we'll talk about the different weapon systems, the moments that we are now heading towards in the battalions, towards motorized, mechanized, etc. And what your world is going to look like in the next 10 years when every single one of you gets in. Katie Baker, Fleetwood Mac, here she is. Long time no see, but Katie, guess what? You're like the dad that rarely smiles. When you do see that smile, it is like summer rain. So thank you very much. Great to have you here, Katie Baker, Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, but if everyone goes over to Katie's um, Instagram, they should have a look there. She's got a great Instagram. She does have a great uh, Instagram, and she surrounds it with the buddies as well. But yeah. it's not a fans page as per se, so make sure you obey your, uh, you, you be kind when you're there. The Wasp is here. Great to have you here, mate. And we've got a crack in here with uh, Cameron Rowbottom. I was three quarters of the way. That's a Weinstein hug coming out to you, Cameron. Maybe Lauren can throw that one out to you. <laughs> Bigger of speaking. Um, I, was, I was making a, a quick, uh, what do you call it, video to say thank you to those who became members. And you've got it straight out of the park. So thank you very much, mate. Part of the team part of the 20-year plan. Great to have you here. Look forward to doing things for you. And just in case you don't understand, guys, if you're a member, one, you see yourself rank up in comments, two, you support the channel, and three, you get every video an hour early than everyone else, uh, which gives you the chance to get those first comments that some people covet so much. Thank you, Cameron. I look forward to hearing what you need scratched with your itch. Uh, Dave D, and I will have a cup of coffee, and I'll throw one out to you, mate. I will throw this to you. You're going to get, because you're the first ever member since we converted over to this one, I'll, I'll throw a not so cow to you. Not so cow. Not so cow. I accept. They weren't all in the Not so cow. Katie Baker, so sweet. It's all good, Katie. You've been here for a long time. I don't know if you still use that the water bottle we got you from our... Uh, Great Ocean Roads, made by World War One veterans uh, that that she won. But uh, that's a great prize. I'm a little bit quiet again. Are you? That's because you yeah. weren't talking, Lauren. No, that's what they say. Well, am I too quiet, or am can you hear me? Not now. That should be fine now. Okay. Uh, you can talk loud. <laughs> I do. I take it to dance most weeks. Oh, that's beautiful. That's really nice. You know, the, the people I, I have done the rocks for really appreciate their rocks still, and they normally work in uh, office environments and love looking down and seeing the rock that I only get during winter from the bottom of oceans or across waters where they've never seen fresh air until my little hand that used to have calluses on it, not so much anymore, reaches down and brings them up into the second world, gives them a face and gives it to someone that I love as a friend. Yeah, they're lovely. That's yeah. the best. Hey, here's a question for you or a comment. Piper Skaz says, okay. Hey, Kaz, pass my national police check and I've got interviews soon for his new session, but I've already done my aptitude test. Smiley face, smiley face. Okay, Hyper, that's awesome. Let's get some hype in the chat and make sure, you know, that we know what you want to join in as because that's important. It because it, it determines how we talk to you and I can tell between the lines what we need to do to facilitate your happiness, your goals within the Australian Army. With no further ado, let's throw the introduction on. This one goes for about three and a half minutes, but you should enjoy it. It is Kaz from the Trenches with Kaz, and I'm here today to introduce you to the subject. High energy, red line, please. 
red shirt. What is it? Bam, duty first, new merch. Flag, which flag? Australian flag. What is it? Three, four, three. This is a test shirt. What's it look like on the back, Kaz? You'll find out later if you keep watching. Guys and gals, this is the first time where you've actually got a choice Juicy. to basically choose what is a priority for you. Is it being in the Army, Air Force, or Navy? Or is it a core that you go for? <laughs> can I go now or can I wait for what I want? Find the enemy and clear him from the high range training area using all the capabilities that we have. But understand one thing, who gets to play with all the toys? Well, it's always going to be those that are closer to the spear point. Those that are the furthest away from civilian equivalents, OH&S, uh, government uh, SOPs, etc. Same deal with Signals Corps, same deal with anything that's in an office. If you want to play with all the toys, the armoured vehicles, the weapons agencies, oh, The missions, the adventure, the fun, the team, the tribe. Infantry, armour and aviation. And that is what we talk about in the Army as the combined arms team. Then you need to get closer to the spear point. And when you get close to the spear point, you get more toys. And the people at the very tip of the tip of the spear are the special forces that have so many toys. They don't know what to play with. But this is your choice. And you can always say, I want more. I need to travel towards that spear point, but you normally go backwards, not forwards towards that spear point as you get older, as your body breaks down, as you have responsibilities that are pulling you from pillar to post that ask you all the necessary questions, can you keep going on? So who gets to play with all the toys? Well, it's the infantry, it's cab. And the areas between cab and infantry are getting closer to closer because of the mechanised and motorised capabilities with the only light infantry now being at the 2nd Battalion of the Royal Australian Regiment, 2nd and none, no mascot. Maybe one area. Hmm. The big blue one. That's what she said. Guys and girls, the fate is in your hands. The positions are limited. So many people trying out for these positions. But if you want it, you're going to make yourself dangerous. Cardio, aggression, fitness, You've got to make toughness. yourself educated, fit, edgy. You've got to change genders. Excuse me, it's ma'am. <laughs> you know what I'm so talking about, team? He who gets to play with the toys is he that gives the most physically. It's no mystery, and you know that. But there's a price to pay, and there's a length of time you know that you can keep this up for the fast lane. And that price can be high. Okay, so that's our introduction for tonight. I hope you enjoyed. You know, I think it makes it pretty clear that we make a conscious decision when we join the military that we are asked, based on our... Um, decision-making processes, what we've said we wanted to do. We've got 66 viewers, which makes it two-thirds the devil. You know, we quick, better quickly go up or down from that as the thumbs down struck. I don't know. Guys and gals, but you make the choices in priority order of what you want, what you need from a career that is potentially the next 40 years, if you can stay on the horse, so to speak. Rhinestone cowboy. <laughs> Sorry for randomness that comes with sugar intake. Here's a good, there's a good question here from yeah. Gabe Carrigan. Okay. What is the most advanced weapon in the Aussie Army or most expensive? Well, that's a hard one because you can go for the floating barrels that come with the 23mm cannons that hang off the back of la on the front of labs. You could go with, um, with javelins. You could go with uh, 84s, Carl Gustav. You could go with, uh, is it a weapon that fires one round that costs a lot, or is it a weapon that fires many rounds, as like a sustained fire machine gun, GPMG, medium machine gun, 20 round bursts, 10,000 rounds, five barrels, etc. You know, could it be 
one of the most expensive precision weapons, which could be anything. The Blazer up from the M417, the, the Barrett. Is it a sniper or is it a precision weapon? Is it the Steyr, which is the most of? It's a tough one. And then you go to Navy and some of their weapon systems by himself, one shot basically, can cost more than your house. Yeah. It's a tough one. Mm. Okay. Lee Dog? It's a good name. Hey man, been watching for a while and I will tell you this, you are the best YouTuber for this type of information. Before I stumbled across your YouTube channel, I was searching YouTube for two months. Holy shit. Welcome. That is welcome, mate. That's uh, yeah. that's that's a really nice compliment, mate. Um, but to to be the devil's advocate and to actually stand up for our uh, fellow members, etc., we need to understand that due to the over policing, which so annoys me, of the Australian government, whereas the military are not allowed to have a political standpoint at all, they're not allowed to have Instagram. They're not allowed to have a YouTube channel. They're not allowed to have Facebook channels where they represent as army. They're not allowed to talk politics, but at the same time, the people at the very top can chain, uh, can be governed by civilians that have never been in a uniform or could fit into a uniform that are telling them how to do it. And then they bow, drop a knee and give everything in return for politics, HR, lowering capability standards and our and our chance of getting back alive in a prolonged fight in a conventional warfare theater so it seems like those whose only job is to be brave at the top sometimes are the most cowardly while still expecting you to meet the deadlines that may be impossible to meet while also being the ones that pay the most in the what do they call that stuff hemoglobin is a nice word of saying mosquitoes yeah. favorite milkshake Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah, it's um, it's yeah. tough. You know, if you want people to join the army, then you show them people training hard, not people in makeup with their hair done up, saying it's great, it's really good. The fitness is not really that big a deal. God damn right, it is. If you're in a fighting corps, if you can't get to the fight, that means you're not covering the fire, or being able to be in a position of fire support for someone who's about to break cover normally from a 90 degree angle, on an objective where you can't turn around if it turns out your Uno you know, card doesn't have enough draw fours to deal with the opponents. How's that? Straight off the bat. That was that was impressive. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, Roman Gamero wants to know... Fantastic Hello, name. I just joined. What are we talking about? Okay, today, Roman, what we're talking about, for starters, SPQR... The, the, the people in the Senate of Rome, fantastic, loved it there, had my first bruschetta there, been to Masada, etc. in Israel, fantastic. Um, we're talking tonight about the weapons and the equipment of the Australian Army, if you wanted to join, if you wanted to know about it, if you need the education. Understanding that although we say we're all one army, just because you're wearing the uniform doesn't mean you get to play with the toys at all. And I'm going to give you a quick example. When you go to Kapuka, I'm sorry, Lauren, you know, you, you've got plenty to say as well. Um, oh, no, I'm listening. When you go to the army and you've made your decisions and you decide to go for support instead of going to infantry, for example, you may never do a B or C class range in your life, which is movement boxes that allow you to use certain weapon systems, you know, beyond the point of Kapuka. So you might only do qualification shoots for the rest of your life, despite the fact you might be for 20 or 40 years, and you may not be very competent on those weapon systems for that 40 years, which makes you sometimes a liability when we go on operations and then NDs happen, negligent discharge as opposed to an unauthorised discharge that can happen when you shoot without being told through a fire control order or as a clash of rules of engagement that you shouldn't have shot. But we should make it quite clear that when you join the army in ordnance, that you may never fire a weapon outside of qualification. You definitely won't be in a section attack. You won't be in a nighttime live fire attack. You probably won't ever have night vision equipment that you're wearing while you've got the weapon with a night aim firing, de uh, night aiming device on your weapon system that puts a laser down range and calibrates with your weapon system that can put a hard target 
uh, around on target uh, by putting the laser on it. Um, you, you're unlikely to use a weapon system above a Minimoi. You'll probably never use a Maximoi. A Mag-58, you may get qualified to use when you go to uh, an operational deployment because you need to be able to do a gun picket and be proficient on that. You're not going to fire 66s. You're probably never going to throw grenades. You're not going to go to a advanced um, uh, grenade range, which is uh, where we run between uh, the pits and then throw grenades from all positions, including laying down. And I'm telling you now, when you if someone can only do pre-fitness enlistment, uh, sorry, not the pre-enlistment fitness test, but if they have to do uh, pre-fit to go to Kapuka, I don't want that person throwing a grenade, you know, with a 15-metre casualty radius, six-metre lethal. There's going to be things like Claymore's M18A1, which we call a anti-personnel device instead of an M-I-N-E, thank you, lady guy, that has 700 grams of C4 composite explosives and 700 ball bearings in a convex shape face towards enemy. You'll see in the front of the center, okay, of this uh, thumbnail, and that has the M4 blast cap assembly that goes back to an M57. You hit that clack, you know, you're going to hear a pretty bloody big bang at the end of that, but you're pretty safe behind it. All that blast goes forward, and everyone it hits is allergic to it. It causes the worst kind of heartburn. Next weapon, let's get into that. Hey, wait a second, SOS. Hi, Cousin Team, my sister-in-law is 14 and wants to be a pilot. Fantastic. Good. I hope she makes it. Do you think Air Force cadets would be a good step into the ADFA, ADF? Not necessarily. Um, it can be. Uh, it depends on the person. You know, there's mixed feelings about cadets because depending on which one you are, okay, the Alpha or the Bravo, you may uh, find that you have, uh, you, you're dealing with a lot of testosterone, you're dealing with a lot of estrogen, you're dealing with a lot of non-frontal cortex members that may not have the supervision required, that are in very large groups that are impressionable, that are away for prolonged periods of time together where there is a great chance of either um, tribalism or negativity, and depending on the other units, there is some which will absolutely, you know, turn you in the best version of you, going into being an adult, guidance, professional, maturity, responsibility, etc. So it's it's a tough one. You know, two units can be completely different. Her unit might be great, and if that's the case, then good. Yeah, exactly. But it's really, again, there's a world of difference between any type of cadets and full-time service in the ADF. And I think that really needs to be understood. It's when you go to full-time service or even reserves, it's not like cadets. Mm. Cadets would be great socially, I'm sure. Just make sure you've checked out your little scout leader guy or whatever they have, you know, because... You know, I imagine it could be a creeper magnet. It, it, <laughs> it was mentioned in the Royal Commission. You know, so we have to do that. Okay, here's a question from Kynan. Can you request to join units or experience to use the equipment? No. Under no circumstance. No. Uh, y you sign your soul away with what you're going to do basically for the rest of your career. You do. There, it's like there is a, uh, a pain penalty that you have to be able to pay to be able to use those weapon systems. It needs uh, intelligence. It needs uh, dexterity. It needs absolute um, repetitive, skilled training. You know, they're not, We call them toys or tools of the trade, but it can go wrong. You know, And the more that you look at it, like it's something cool and something fun, the more chance you're going to stuff up with it, which is the reason why the pistol, I believe, should never be carried by anyone other than a machine gunner as his number two. And even then, I don't reckon they should have a pistol either. They're not going to be there by himself. They don't need a pistol. No one in a rifle section needs to carry a pistol at all. And, and, and I'll stick by that, you know, because you know what? Our job is not to be there like the SF community, you know, where we do a walk in, hit a target, get the hell out of there. Our job is to potentially be months in the field, maintaining two weapon systems. And when when did any of our soldiers use a pistol? I can't remember a single one in my career. I remember it plenty where they actually had one stuffed around. Some have died. You know, a lot of negligent discharges, 
a lot of mistakes. A lot can go wrong for no real positive ability to use it. And they're only good for about 21 feet plus anyway. Okay, here's another question from Cameron Rowbottom. He said, what level of weaponry understanding does he need to be prepared for the U session and officers board? Look, to tell you the truth there, Cam, you know, you don't really need much at all. All you need to know is some of the videos that we put out that the EF-88 is the, the current assault weapon system that's being used by the Australian Army. That we use either the F-89, which is our light machine gun, which is mixed with the uh, the Maximoi, which is a 7.62 version, basically, of the same weapon system. Then we have a Mag-58 that is an all-core weapon system for using on fixed positions on operational deployments, but can also be carried um, and mounted on vehicles. We have the 66, also the 72 millimeter law, light anti-armor uh, weapon. So for you, it's important that we understand we've got capabilities. And these capabilities, Cameron, new member to the channel, thank you, is that we have an indirect capability, an area weapon defects with underslung GLAs, grenade launchers. We have a ability to suppress the enemy for long periods of time up to 800 rounds at 60 rounds a minute or 120 rounds a minute, you know, so we can suppress the enemy from greater distance. We have precision weapon systems through the M417 and other weapon systems as marksmanship rifles. Okay, we have normal assault weapons, the EF-88, okay, which is the, is the current weapon carried, which is made in Austria and Australia, not, uh, not by the US, which is the reason why we predominantly don't use the M4. Um, so we have an, a light anti-armor capability as well. We have communications down to the man and infantry squads. We have uh, command, control, and communication uh, starting at the level at section, you know, where we actually have a tactical commander, you know, and then that goes up from there uh, for communications and control through our SOPs, TTPs, physical communication through the radio systems, rear links, etc. You know, etc. I'm sorry, it probably feels like I just put a, a bloody fire hose in your mouth and, and turned it on. That I recommend that you and I have a conversation soon and we can drag that out over the length of a cup of coffee and then you're going to feel like you're ready to pick up that sword and say, I choose sword over rifle, etc. Okay. Are you ready for the next question? Let's go. Lee Dog asks, um, he has a question for you. What is the hardest handheld weapon to aim and to get qualified on, in your opinion? I, I would say the hardest weapon, using the, the marksmanship principles, etc., is the F-89. That's the, uh, the light machine gun. The reason is, and you won't really need to do that and pass until you get to the School of Infantry, uh, as opposed to sort of just use it. You know, participate, but still cook the books and say competent, which you won't be after Kapuka. Um, that is hard because you'll be firing that from the standing position. Firing a machine gun from a standing position is not easy. But we put sights on there to try and make it more complex than it needs to be. Yeah, the reason why you have 200 rounds attached to it, you know, when you're going to be in, a, in an area for a prolonged period of time, is so that you can walk onto targets too. You can actually blaze the ground, trees, area, road, vehicle. You can paint targets by uh, machine gun splash, you know, of your rounds hitting it to actually use that as an indication to then be able to give a fire, uh, indi a, uh, a target indication to others. Watch my fuller shot. You know, at greater ranges, you can walk the fire onto targets using a number two. And where possible, you should have a number two, especially at, at uh, extended ranges, so you can use that because uh, so, you're going to get tunnel vision by the way you hold the weapon, by the way you fire the weapon. We're not going to be able to look back and hear the commands coming from your session command in regards to fire control orders, you know, switching targets, cut off. Yep. So machine guns from the standing position, I reckon, is the hardest. Everything else I've found pretty damn easy. Okay, here's a question. Piper Skaz again. Piper. Hey Kaz, what do I have to do to get the best possible choice for my battalion selection after IET? I want 2RAR bad, 
but I know it's hard to get any advice. Okay, for, for starters, man, you've got to realize there may be no chance of getting to two. You might do everything at uh, at um, Kapuka and then get to the School of Infantry and be like Fletch and be gunning for best soldier, like Stewie, best soldier Kapuka and best soldier at Singo and still not end up in the 2nd Battalion because there's no positions. But what you have to do is you make it vocal. that That's where you want to go. Two, you do some work with swimming before you get there so that you are very confident in the water, very confident. Then what you do is make yourself the fittest beast you possibly can, the best team member. Make yourself dangerous. Make yourself stand out. Make yourself someone of note so they go, yeah, I'm not competing with that guy. He's going to two. We all know that. So merit will get you there. The work yeah. you do before you get in will make the decision on whether you get to some of these places over someone else. Fair enough. Okay, Mr. Patterson can't stay long tonight because he's a bit cooked today. I hope you're all right, mate. It seems to be going around. You know, I, I felt like I had the plague the last few days too. And mate, Mr. P, I hope you're okay, mate. Go and put your head down and have some of that chicken soup that you get when you're married happily. You know, it's been a while for me. And, uh, mate, um, yeah, I hope you feel better than what I did when I woke up this morning, mate. All the best, you old timer. Yeah, exactly. I hope you feel better next stream, Mr. P. Um, okay, Michael Stott's obviously going off with the dad jokes tonight. Who's that? <laughs> Michael Stott is. <laughs> and... I'm just, I think I'm going to have to, like, warn 1999 edition. Both me and JC have timed him out tonight, and he seems to be getting really butt hurt that somebody wants to join the infantry. If they want to go to the infantry, it's fine. Don't take it personally if you weren't in the infantry. There's heaps of people here that want to go to everywhere. And, 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 I'll, add, and I'll add something to that. It's absolutely wrong to go to the military to get a trade and then try to go to infantry. It's absolutely a great idea to go to infantry and then get a trade before you get out. Yeah, that, that, that's a great way to do it. The trades in, in the Australian Army are fantastic. Now, they are. But yeah. you know what? We need infantry more than we need tradies. Guaranteed. Every but time. But, and, and, you know, different strokes for different folks, right? It's true. It, it is true. Yeah, Here's yeah. Declan O'Callaghan. He's a member and he says, Hey, Kaz, I'm going for infantry in two months and want to RAR more than anything. I'm a national swimmer, so swimming definitely isn't a problem. But do you have any training ideas for my other areas? Cardio running. Okay. Other than that, mate, all it is is, is basically just being ready. It's, it's going to come out in Singo, mate. A lot of people, when they're very, very fit, hurt the most when they're actually around people for long periods of time, when they're used to being the top of the stack. And then when they get challenged over something that you can't be fit enough for, because we also do training in the uh, in the elements to failure, etc., where you might have something that becomes your kryptonite, so to speak. Yeah. So just make sure that you cross-train, not cross-dress, and you should be fine, mate. You know, what it, what it is, is you think so much about it that you're starting to create anxiety for yourself Yeah. when it might be completely outside your hands and you might be more than qualified. We have so many people from this channel that turn up to the U session, assessment session, PFA, and they go, mate, you were so ready for this. And they were the ner most nervous one there because it means the most to them. Yep. Mr. Patterson's off to bed. Good night, Mr. Patterson. Good night, Mr. P. Great sleep. And good looking lady is here. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, here's a question. Ranger Ranger, who is a member, said, What kind of marksmanship skill or score do you have to get to get in sniper school? Well, that's a funny one because you don't need one at all. You just need to be able to pass your shoot. But then what happens is one of the first things you do when you go for snipers is go and do the range week to do that that shooting of that weapon system. And then what will happen is you'll get your qualification. I believe they're still using the SR-98, um, and, and they might even be using the Barrett for that as well. Um, uh, any material rifle, I'm not sure which one they're using at the moment. Everything is changing fairly quickly at the moment. 
um, quicker than an Arab on Tinder. And um, oh, basically <laughs> what happens is once you go to that training, then you'll go and do those rain shoots. And if you don't pass those shoots, you'll either have a post-test retest or you'll be, no, you don't, just don't go beyond this point. Yeah. Okay. Um, Roman is asking if he can talk to you about the army any other time. Is there a link to the Patreon in the description? There should be uh, a link to the Patreon below. Um, yep. It's, yeah, I, I think there was. I think there is. Yep, because if you yep. want to um, chat to Kaz Moore or something, he puts a lot into his Patreon and you can access the bat phone. So he had too many people contacting him to you. You used to put your number out. Oh, what, and, what happens is I can say, hey, look, I've got a, a splitting headache. And if for some reason, that'll be the day that you get 10 calls back to back. You know, yep. um, I, I end up, uh, Paul Will has been trying to, to call me. You know, I, I spoke to him on the weekend and then um, I said I'll ring you again tomorrow. And I, I just couldn't do it. And then Liam ended up getting on. He was going for his test today, but missed recruiting when they rang him today. And um, I spoke to him for, I think it was an hour last night. It's, you know, you leave a message, don't just ring. And what happens is I leave the messages uh, and then I go down and I ring them uh, one after the other while I've got a coffee. And more often than not, it's you guys that are the, one, the first ones to break away and go, okay, Kaz, I've, I've got to go. I've got to go. <laughs> okay, so you'll be happy with the service. That's that's yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. Tasmanian Devil. Hello. Uh, it says hi, Kaz. When a person is in an RAR, is mm. that for their full career? I think he means, or do they get moved around? No, you'll stay there. That's your core master. That's where you are. Unless you get a core transfer, that's where you're going to be. But in saying that, using equipment, motorized, mechanized, light. Now, what will happen is you will go from, once you're a Lance Corporal, then you'll uh, have basically a year to do your sub two for section commander's course, sub two, which will make you a section commander. Once you get the section commander, you'll be there for several years. And then you'll have a choice of basically Kapuka or the School of Infantry. That'll be your choices. You might be able to weasel out of that and go to an Army Reserve Depot or might be able to even go to recruiting. You know, But to earn your salt, you need to go to the School of Infantry, preferably. And the reason that is, is not necessarily just to give you time back to infantry. It's because that's where you learn so much by being around the infantry corps, by being around people from 7 RR, from 5 RR, from 8, 9, from 6, from 1, from 3, and then working beside them as instructors. And then you'll come back from there, normally back to the battalion as a platoon sergeant. You do a couple of years there as a platoon sergeant, assisting a platoon commander, supporting the ship, not trying to run the ship. And then you'll go back to the School of Infantry or to Kapuka or again weasel off to uh, recruiting CTC or going to uh, an armed reserve depot. And then the same thing happens for Warren Officer Class 2. Same thing happens for RSM. Right. So you'll stay in the RAR and it's fantastic because we've also got the hardest sergeant's mess to get into. And that's where you'll have your sash on. You know, and then you go in there, and it's a fantastic club. And uh, what happens in there, more happens in there than probably happens in the office to get a, an outcome where there's no politics and no officers in there to uh, to hear their robust conversations. We can drop a bit of rank, a little bit. Respect starts at the start. Have some sherry, have a beer, have a wine, whatever. Free wine, basically a dollar a bottle down in uh, the Hunter Valley. Hmm. You'd be laughing. Okay. Are you ready for the next one? Yeah, yeah. See, see. JHK, who is a member, would like to know what weapon will I carry as a nurse? Oh, I would say you'd be carrying a uh, F-88. You know, probably, maybe not even an EF-88. It might be just an F-88. Um, and or it could be a pistol. Because you, you still need to be able to protect the patient. Yeah. So that's what you'd be carrying. And an EpiPen. And also some, uh, the drugs that killed River Phoenix, so to speak, the morphine. Mm. Okay. Um, hang on a second. I'm just trying to catch up and then it jumped away from me. Graydon Gaunt. That's a good name. Wait a sec. So Sorry. I agree, Aaron. 
and you've heard me say on here a bunch of times that I believe the combat engineers, they work too hard for me to go there. I like to clean my teeth and my rifle, and that's it. Engineers, no sooner have they finished a, a role, then there's another one waiting for them. Very, very hard workers. Make sure you got some ticker if you're going to go there. Aaron, give us a thumbs up if you agree with that. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Graydon Gaunt says, Will glasses negate you for infantry either as general entry or officer? Look, I, I keep forgetting about this one because I never had bad eyes while I was in. I know nothing about it. I don't even remember seeing if people had glasses in. I know Harry did. And he yeah, got Harry, laser Harry. surgery and became 10% more handsome overnight. Yeah, apparently. And that's legendary, the story of Harry's birth control glasses. Yeah, that, yeah, they were. Um, no one laughs as hard as Harry. It's, it's fantastic. It's infectious. I don't know what the deal with... Um, I don't know what the deal is with glasses. Like, can you come in with bad eyes? Or do I, I they kick you out bad. once your eyes go bad? You know, it's, it's a big like difference. A, oh, yeah, there's probably a, you know, there's probably a gradient of how bad eyes can get. So it's probably, I don't know, just try. It's all you can, it, look, it's all you can do. And it, no one knows what is waiting for you. The equipment you've got at the moment is in transit. At the moment, you've got motorised and mechanised in each brigade, which means you have tracked and wheeled vehicles. And then you've got the... Uh, Wait a minute, are we off or on? Well, it says excellent condition. Thumbs up or down, team? Thumbs up or down? I just saw a couple of questions saying so. Maybe it was just... Um, no, that seems to be fine. All right, good. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Because yeah. I can't see anything. Must be just mine then. Yeah, Declan, there he is. JC's gone, is he? Drank too much. <laughs> Good on you. He's, he, he's been on the sacrament. <laughs> there you go. Hands of colour. Great to have you there. Okay. That's good. Now we know, we know they're there. Okay. Um, Ooft has asked, will infantry get deployed this year or the coming years? No. No. And, and I, could, I, I could say I believe there's a 100% chance that will not happen. As a matter of fact, why do we have anyone anywhere at the moment? If I'm a soldier, and I'm not a Queensland soldier, I'm not a New South Wales soldier, I'm an Australian soldier, if I can't cross borders, why can I go overseas to an area that has less medical, less medical facilities that can look after me during this situation? You know, um, I believe that we should have brought people back personally um, and start to look after our own borders like our US brothers are. You know, okay. I don't think we're going to go overseas because of the medical problem. If we if we have a, a drama sending people to Kapuka and after they've been quarantined, still don't make them do the PT because of this, and then make them do two weeks quarantine after it, despite the fact they've been quarantined for more than 12 weeks, which doesn't make sense, but costs billions, or well, at least over 80 bucks, then we won't be going anywhere overseas until this all <laughs> settles down. And we're in one of the most peaceful periods of all. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Dylan Hobday has said, Hey, Kaz, how prominent are designated marksman rifles slash role in infantry sections? They're not in any sections, mate. Uh, what they are, they're in the weapons uh, platoon that happens as part of the standard infantry battalion setup that is currently still in place until the vehicles take over the firepower for those sections. And what that means is you'll have a platoon you know, because uh, we used to have Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta Company. They got rid of Delta Company. Delta Company now made up the weapons platoons for which have 12 men in each section. You know, and what happens is those uh, those platoons, you know, there'll be one platoon per company. It can be attached to a uh, one, of the platoon, one of the platoons. Sections can get attached to each platoon or it can be a platoon by itself. So you could have four platoons inside a, uh, a company or there can be three platoons, right? And they have four man sections with one of them being a 12 man section uh, that has other capabilities, including a marksman. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
that was good. I'm not sure about this. Kemp Thorne has said, I'm pretty sure as long as you have contacts or something to counteract the vision. I don't know how contacts... Are you won't be allowed, you're not allowed to have, you won't be allowed in the army of contacts. Surely that would you'll be have, good. You'll have glasses or you're going to have yeah. surgery. The laser surgery, which is pretty good idea. Yeah, here. yeah. Okay. Um, good night, JC. Good night, JC. Bottoms up, mate. Yeah, exactly. Let's put a video on for these guys just to yeah, keep their interest a little bit. What, are you saying I'm boring? No, I'm saying we are at the moment. These guys, <laughs> they need some eye candy rather than just my uh, bros hairstyle. <laughs> so this one here, we're just going to wax something on here for you and I'm going to explain something to you. When you train to go to military, you need to understand there's a couple of things. We train to TTPs and SOPs based on enemy actions on. So what happens is we create a green book of plays, a quarterback punk. The coach makes these plays based on every single foreseeable enemy action or threat action or incident that could happen on an operational environment. And then what we do is repetitive drills that compensate for that, make it a smooth muscle memory, a drill, so when it occurs, no commands need to be given and an automatic action happens by those tactical formations. Hey, Mr. Bryce. Minister for Foreign Finances has rung uh, the dinner bell. What a sec. Oh, here we are. Not so cold. Not so cold. I accept. Not there you go, Mr. So Bryce. I hope you enjoy the new one, mate. I hope you enjoy the new one. Go and give her a hug for me too, mate. You're a battler. Um, and JP's here too, just before you. Hey, JP, how you going, mate? J JP knows a lot about the sniper stuff too, by the way, Tim. Yeah, if you've got sniper questions, JP would love it. Yeah, he'd dig it, he'd so dig to it. speak, being an ex-digger, yep. if there's such yep. thing as an ex-digger. <laughs> um, yeah, so what happens is, whether it be actions on mines, whether it be actions on contact, whether it be actions on ambush, whether it be actions on casualty, you know, actions on uh, commander be, being hit, going down, any one of these things, actions on being compromised by a civilian, then we will have a play that plays out before a commander has to give a decision which gives him time to take a tactical pause, let the drill go through to completion, and the next time he speaks, or platoon commander speaks, that is when the drill ends and that becomes, you're now being commanded to do Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, etc. So what I'm going to say is, when we do an attack, everyone knows what to do, where to be, the spacing to have, how to fire their weapon system, etc. You need to be training <coughs> for the worst day ever. Not looking backwards, looking forwards, make it shot, continue moving forward. That's what it's all about, training for the very worst day. Your physicality has to be second to none because if the platoon is traveling at the speed of you and you are not good to go because of injury, sickness, ailments, ailment, or because you do not have the fitness, and believe me, even if you had guys from the Olympic marathon uh, race, you're still not going to be able to move fast enough. There is no speed fast enough. So don't take it, Percy. Don't get butt hurt. But that's why we do mill skills. That's why we train hard for the day it goes wrong. This is an example of one of those moments. This is part of, could you say it's quick attack, deliberate attack? I'd say it's quite a quick, actually. The bayonet. We're going to speak about that in a moment. Go on the red smoke. When you tell people to fix a bayonet, what you're telling them is there's no turning back. We're going all the way to take his ground. If yep. he puts them on in return, you're in big trouble. This is not so much as a weapon as what it is, a psychological message from the platoon commander, who is the first one that initiates it, to his men to let them know we are going to be within one metre, we are going to take those guys down using the claws that God gave us. Yeah, looking them in the white to the eye. Yep. No, and that gives them the opportunity to run, put their weapons down, or fight. And you hope they don't choose fight. Jesus. And normally when people get take on a bayonet fight against Australians, they lose pretty bloody badly.
few of the things Australians have been renowned for. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, jungle fighting, and ambushing. You want your cardio to be up to scratch at the moment, wouldn't you? Toon Commander leading the way. Dave's getting excited. I can feel it. The pumping of his heart. <laughs> this is not what he expected over this. Oh. No, this is a good bit. He'd be thinking at the moment, where the hell are my mates? Yeah. Just as well, he didn't stop and think too long. Yep. The sad thing is, that's fathers versus fathers. Yep. No sheepdog versus sheepdog. And this can happen to you. There you go. No, soon you put this on and watch. Okay. It actually picked up and said it was audio stream might be temporarily blocked. What the heck? All right, fair enough, Steve. Mm, uh, does the uh, infantry still use the same section formations? Look, uh, we had, with the section formations, what we had was the nine-man sections, which allowed the section commander to be the, um, the quarterback, so to speak, to deal from the depth. The commander should never be the lead guy. He needs to be back to be able to read the plays, move and coordinate his call signs to save money. And that's the only reason we went down to eight-man sections, two fire teams, etc. You know, I believe we should have been nine. But this is about money, team, not about survivability, not about doing the right thing. People um, did... Got... Sorry? Are you finished or are you still going? No, you go. Okay, because I've got some questions from a bit further back that I paused on. Okay, throw them. I... Quite good. Um, Swillpot says... Hi, Kaz. I'm 37, past my pre-medical and aptitude with flying colours. Would my age be a problem for going as an MP or recovery mechanic? Absolutely not. I, I think they're two very, very good positions for you, mate. Absolutely go for them. You know, MPs requires uh, lack of ego and it needs judgment. You know, you're not going to be in there. Don't mix it up with being a cop. It's not like being a cop. You know, there are so many more jobs to be in an MP than dealing with just barracks bullshit. As soon as it's a serious crime, the MPs don't deal with it. It gets passed over to the uh, uh, the police, the thin blue line, JC, etc. Um, you will do things like guides, motorbike courses, dog handling, fighting dogs, not sniffing dogs. So you, you'll be using those. Um, and what else you'll be doing? Uh, potentially interrogation courses. You could be doing uh, detainee courses, etc. There's a whole raft of things you can do, and you ask to go to those things and then do those courses as part of your progression. 37's fine. Yep. 37's okay. fine. This one, um, I don't know a username, said, G'day, Kaz. I'm fairly new around here. Hope it's all right if I stick around and ask a few questions. I don't know much about the stream. What's, it, what's this... Um, Lovely person, respectful person's name? It's IDK, which is I don't know, a username. Okay, I don't, I don't know. Just um, can we get some thumbs up there, some hands of colour in the chat um, uh, from there and let IDK uh, know, one, welcome, two, ask a question, mate. Subscribe while you're here. Press the like. See if we can turn the thumb blue, which means it goes on the recommended list, which means more people that need the help to actually carry out what they're doing, you know, to be a better version of themselves, etc., actually get to see these videos. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, yep. ta I'm talking to him now. Yeah, um, I mean. Mate, we are an Australian channel, but yep. we're global. We talk to everyone and anyone. This is the people that talk to your comments, that give you the chance to be an invested in the channel as you want. I believe we have the best community. I think so too. And thanks for saying g'day. We always love it when you when people actually pop in the chat and say g'day. Yeah, it's awesome. It means yeah. that someone's come on here and looked and gone, ah, okay, this is not too bad. I'll hang around a little bit longer. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about yourself and Lauren will pass that on to us and we'll make a, a proper introduction. Feel free yeah. to be either become a member, okay, so yeah. you can watch yourself turn green. You know, and if you've got any situations or life mentoring that you need, can't afford a doctor, come over to Patreon in the link below. And for the price of a coffee a month, I'll talk to you as well on this phone, the bat phone. Yeah, that'd be good. 
Okay, so here's one from yep. a good-looking lady. Says, Kaz, Hello. what do you think of fire and movement? Fire and movement, I, I, I did it all my life. <laughs> fire and movement is, is a fantastic way to close the distance between us and them when we take their land. Remember, our whole role is to seek out and close the enemy, to kill or catch him, to seize and hold ground, to repel attack by day or night, regardless of season, weather or terrain. One of the things about body armour, it can give the perception, the Ned Kelly effect, I like to call it, I just made that up, okay, that we are bulletproof, which we're not. Uh, for us to get between us and the, the threat, we do fire and movement, which means run down, crawl, observe, aim, fire. So it finishes when you fire again. And that is part of a drill too, contact drill, all right? And returning fire as well on the enemy to make him take his mind off the, off the fight. But every five meters, we should be running, surging, changing direction a little bit, run down, crawl, observe, aim, fire. And we do that. And it's not until you actually see it from the threat's perspective, you realize how effective it is. Because what occurs is the movement, whether it be odds, evens, formations, assault formations, in the assault um, uh, stage of the attack, okay, which is the second, we've got the advanced, the assault, sorry, we've got the preparatory stage, we've got the assault, we've got the reorg, and sorry, the uh, exploitation and the reorg. Well, during the assault, when you have uh, movement, controlled movement happening towards the enemy, whether it's by a session commander or group commanders, when you're on the other end and you're looking, it seems like whack-a-mole. Every time you look over there, that guy goes down. Bang, someone's up over there. You switch aim. Then that guy comes up again. Fire's coming back at you as well, suppressing one round within one meter of the target. You know, it, it is a very effective way to close on them until all of a sudden they're realizing my only opportunity now is to see is there an afterlife or throw me weapon as far as I can, reverse shot put, throw it back over your head. You know, find something white in your clothing, maybe a Navy guy's hat, and hold it up and say, I give up. <laughs> Tap out. Why have you got a Navy man's hat? All right, ready? Here we go. Liam Haverty said, Kaz, you'll be happy to know that 5RAR used your cadence push-up video for a company versus company competition last week. That's awesome. Much That's respect over to the brothers of the Royal Australian Regiment from 5RAR. Yeah, exactly. What was the top score there, mate? That'd be an interesting one. That, that would be interesting. Lewis Coyne would, say, would like to know, how long do you spend at the School of Infantry? Normally two years, but sometimes it can get stretched to three. Mm. Yeah, sometimes okay. it gets stretched to three. Um, let's have a look. Um, Carl Janelle is confused. Hey, Kaz and Lauren, I joined last week. How long till I come up in colour? I'd say it didn't work and perhaps try again, Carl, because it should, he should turn it green straight away. It should be almost immediately. If, if you join, it should be immediately. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Chicken Wings asks, is the 3rd Battalion the parachuting regiment? No. The, the only parachuting capability we have now is with SASR as main units. SASR, Special Air Service Regiment in Perth, and the 2nd Commando Regiment, which is in Sydney. 3 RAR was a, uh, a jump, a paratroop uh, battalion, and they had fast descent shoots. That got taken off of them because, one, they never used it, and two, the amount of injuries that was sustained through that that ended up putting some guys on pensions for potentially the rest of their life. Um, there's a completely different parachute used by commandos in SASR to what was used as conventional infantry, fast descents, low altitude shoots. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, well, maybe Carl went to... Um, Carl, did you go to um, Patreon and not... The member, they're, they're two separate things, mate. So you yeah, might have yeah. gone to Patreon, and that's not going to change your name here at all. Being yeah, exactly. the member of the channel, uh, which is the join button beside the subscribe button, that is what will turn you the different colour. Sorry, mate. Feel free to jump out of one into the other if you wish. Yeah, no worries. Dusty's here, and he said he's uh, sorry he's late, and hello. It's a, and thanks, it's a dusty road. Th yeah, thanks for the text this morning, he said. That's all right, mate. Okay, that's all right. Um, Cold Llamas asked a question, and we have answered it before, but it's kind of important because someone could hurt themselves if they don't take your advice, I think. Cold Llama has asked, 
um, if Chet doesn't mind me asking, we don't, is using a weighted vest a good idea to prepare for the equipment? No. This is, you're not training to go on a sporting event. You're trying to go potentially on a 40-year 40 40 year career. You might think at the moment, I'm going to stay in for four years and then I'm going to do this. Those plans are only as good until the day you get in and realize, shit, this is what I want to do. Or you might plan on getting in for 40 and only do four if you are let down by either the system, uh, gravity, relationship, or something changes in your mind. Um, so you've got to pace yourself, man. You know, you've got to pace yourself. You know, if you can run on a rubber track, which you can do in places like Townsville, then do so. Running on the road is not good for your lower limbs. Some of the uh, the injuries that we get taken into account, I'm three centimetres nearly shorter than what I was when I joined. My mate has just found out that he's got a broken back and two, uh, two fractures in his back. You know, once he got an in-depth, uh, uh, what do they call them? What do they call those back scans? Anyway. Okay. Yeah, one of them. Yeah, so some of the injuries that we get is lumbar spondylosis. Some of the other injuries we get is um, shin splints from running on hard surfaces, impacting, uh, not having good joggers, running flat-footed in boots, etc. And there's also one's called compartment syndrome, which is caused by the the sheath that surrounds your muscle in your calves, of which I've got none, uh, swelling to a point where the pressure is unbearable and causes agony and will result in some horrific what look like car crash scars on your legs to release that said pressure. You know, so don't age your body before you need to. Yeah, MRI, the, the chat is telling us. Excellent, Thank you. MRI. Um, okay, uh, GAV has a question. Yeah. How is body armor at stopping rounds from penetrating really good okay Re really good if it, if it hits around the center and stuff yeah okay here's one Declan O'Callaghan says first stream as a member for me today so happy to be part of the team thanks for everything you do Kaz Declan and look he's already the Lance Corporal that was from Declan yeah yeah he may just he may have been a member for a while but just not caught a stream okay there you go well done, yes. Declan. SOS is always here. Okay. Sebastian White asks, does Blitzkrieg still get used? No. Um, look, Blitzkrieg, uh, that was a conventional uh, tactic, using um, using their aircraft mixed with their tanks, mixed with their artillery, mixed with their infantry, etc., in combination, moving fast, hitting hard, stormtroopers that overwhelms the enemy, before he could actually put up a proper defense, etc. No, we haven't been in a conventional fight like that for, you know, almost since that period. Yep. You know, other than in small pockets. Wait two seconds, team. Just uh, talk amongst yourselves for two seconds. I've just got to uh, make communications with the rear link with the shortest, <laughs> the shortest little lass. Little Miss Adorable. I tell you what, the amount of people when they see my daughter go, I hope you meet the dad one day. <laughs> she is. She's so lucky to have a dad like me. She, <laughs> she is. She likes to pretend that I'm a cop and that she doesn't do what she's told. So I don't know if that's going to be a problem when she gets older. Uh, here we go. 2-1. This is 2-1 Alpha over. Hello. G'day. How you going, darling? You're supposed to be putting your head on the pillow. Ambush set. I'm doing something. Okay. Maybe I'll ring you after. Okay, my dear. When I'm going to sleep, okay? Okay, that'll make me happy. I love you. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. If you've got kids, can you put a thumbs up in the chat just so I can see who the parents are? And, and let me tell you something. You may think to yourself... I don't really want kids, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, mate, as soon as you have children, something happens within your soul where everything changes. And no matter what was important to you before, you seem to then define yourself as a parent. And it is the best, but hardest thing in the world because every single thing they do is counter to what you want them to do. It's like trying to catch a fart that's invisible in a plastic bag. <laughs> oh in it. In a, de in a Democrat state. 
No plastic allowed. <laughs> Do you know milk is served in bags in Canada, not cartons? Well, why not? I suppose if you get a little juicy bag, you know. Yeah, but that's the whole point. Aren't they supposed to be with Trudeau all about the global warming and doing the yeah. right thing by the environment and even their milk is plastic bags. Where do you put missing people on a plastic bag? Yeah, well, we, we don't put missing people on our milk. Well, it's probably a good idea, though. Guess who's okay. here? James Brown. da na 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 He feels good. da na 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 There you go. Okay, here's a, here, here's a question. <laughs> SAB 68. Oh, it's not a question. It's a statement, but it's a good one. From what I remember from my time in one RAR in the late 80s and early 90s, thank you for your service. Yes. We rarely had all nine in the section due to courses or whatever. Yep, ab absolutely true. So imagine what it's like now that where you've got a, a standing eight. The same situation. There's get, Now there's less. But I, I will tell you something else. Sorry, what was the name of the gentleman from one era? SAB 68. SAB 68. I, I'll tell you something, mate. Remember how rare it was for you to get in the back of an APC? You know, well, that's not rare anymore. Now every battalion except the second battalion is considered either mo uh, motorised or mechanised which means there's never been a better time to be in infantry because you're basically almost getting driven everywhere. I was a foot soldier my whole career. Sometimes I was in a chopper. Sometimes I was in a plane. Sometimes I was in a Navy boat. But I made sure I sat down, especially in the shower. Other times I was in uh, tracked vehicles. Other times I was in wheeled. But now they're always going to be there. That's part of their MO, part of their movement, part of their fast manoeuvrability, and firepower capability. Now, that's fantastic for guys now, where you can work just on big muscles instead of cardio. Now, you still need cardio. Here's a curious point uh, for you there, Lauren, and okay. for the chat. How many people does it take to Kazavak to stretch a carry one wounded soldier? How many to? I, I wouldn't have a clue. It's more than you think. Yeah, I just wouldn't have a clue. How many? We'll give him a couple of seconds there while we yeah. think, while we go through another question. Okay. Uh, Chopper says, Hey, Lauren and Kaz, do you guys have much info on the new cyber jobs generation in the Defence Force? It's pretty tough to research about because it's so new. Cheers. It's pretty well eight. Sorry. No, I've got nothing on the cyber. No, it takes an entire section because the four people that have to carry an individual, you've got to remember, you've also got to carry his pack. You've also got to carry his weapon system or her. But you've also got to have security. You've got to have someone in charge of the rotations. You've got to have someone in charge of the navigation, getting them from point A that doesn't touch the stretcher at all. So if you have one wounded person of an eight-man section and you're not in a APC, LAV, future boxer, infantry fighting vehicle, Bushmaster, etc., it will take an entire section to carry that guy out of there. Now you know the importance sometimes of wounding instead of, or multiple wounds. If you have multiple people that are, uh, that are unable to walk, that call sign's going nowhere. And you can't just drop a chopper onto a casualty site if it's still contested. So then you've got to call that QRF, Quick Reaction Force, to be able to come out and secure that environment. So that is how, um, or the reason why, often we'll be out there as an entire platoon instead of just a section. Because if something goes wrong, it takes everyone to get you the hell out of there. And you've got the golden hour. Stoddy loves, loves the, uh, the golden hour. Butterworth was a good trip. Stoddy, you'd, you'd remember back in the start of the 90s when there was a horrific crash where a, um, from 5-7 when they were a joint battalion. How many, how many got killed? Eight in, in that car crash uh, where someone ran into the, uh, the mog? That was, that was terrible. I had a mog roll over in Timor too. You know, I think there were 16 people in the back. You know, all sorts of injuries. And the medic that turned up was morbidly obese. And she was yeah. unable to even carry her own equipment and was unable to due to... Uh, she was an army reservist due to her lack of physical fitness... Was, una was unable to give medical aid to the to the injured. 
Couldn't do her job. Despite the fact that she turned up in a vehicle. Mm. She was a disgrace. She should have been charged and sent home. Good what, night, Dick. What was her offence? Being fat and useless. Yep. Declan's off to have dinner. See you later, Dick. It I sounds like leave. a bad guy in a movie, Declan. Dec- He'll get the think, job done. I think he kind of sounds like maybe upper class name. It's a lovely name. It sounds good looking. Yeah, High cheekbones, strong jaw. Everyone here is good looking. All right. Liam Haverty said some recon blokes got up to 100, which is where your video ends, he said. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, the record, in case you're wondering what the record is for what I've seen, was a guy called Johnny Lindgren. Amateur boxer, second battalion. Now he's retired. He got up to 200. 200 push-ups he did. And I never would have believed that, except I was there. I could not believe it. That was 10 minutes straight. 10 minutes to get those out of in the push-up position. If I made everyone here even just plank for 10 minutes, 99% of us would be, would be smoked. And there's only 96 of us, so that means all of us smoked. And this guy did it and did push-ups. It was amazing. Okay, um, Freddy Carr's so funny. He said Dave D is the closest thing we had to a paratrooper. <laughs> guys, and, guys and gals, if you're new to the channel, Dave D went to become a military officer. Decides he's going to have one more play in the tree, Tarzan style, allergic to gravity, jumps out of the tree. We're talking about less than a metre. Hits the ground and basically cuts his leg off. With his son looking at him going, Dad, you know, my Lego does that. <laughs> yeah. Basically, Look, the bones both snapped in his leg. He had open fracture as well. The only thing holding his leg on, okay, was the ligaments. It was disgusting. Thanks was, for sending me the pictures. It was <laughs> disgusting. Was it your thing? It was Dave. Someone sent me pictures. It was disgusting. <laughs> hey, guys and girls, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly show something here. Oh, it was two metres, says Dave. Yeah, where your head was. <laughs> I'm going to show you a photo now because it's important you see this. For those that watch the channel and go, Kaz, how come you got out of the army? We all know that Kaz has got post-traumatic stress disorder from my time in uh, in Central Africa at Rwanda. You know, um, it doesn't define me. It sucks, you know, but I try to keep it in the back of my mind as much as possible, but sometimes... You know, it's, I'm unable to do that. And then I shield myself away from other people. But that's not my only ailment. You know, fuck back. Absolutely shocking. But one of the things that was really, really bad, and when it happens, it makes you want to kill yourself, honestly. And I don't like to say that term. It's the same thing that the Prime Minister, Shinzo Abe of Japan, has just retired from being their, their uh, Japan's uh, Prime Minister. Um and it's called ulcerative colitis. Now, when I go to the toilet, not at the moment, I'm in remission. But one of the things that I got on an operational trip that the army has still said, no, no one knows what caused that. And I went, well, how about a punter's chance that maybe it was something in the water, something in the food, something that happened in the middle of East Timor that made my butt react the way it did. So I'm going to show you one photo. This is the warning. Turn away if you've got a weak stomach. I had to get this photo. The doctor told me to do it so he is could see. Sorry? Is it of your butt or something? Hideous? It's not my actual butt. Oh, I'm not going to want to look, am I? Look away for a second. Okay. This is one of the photos. This is one of the photos so you know what it was like when I go to the toilet. Okay? And when it wasn't that, it's like that. None of it's poo. All right, and that was something that I, I got over there. So sometimes when I'm sick, that can be why. And the medicine, this is a funny one. You know how I tease Navy all the time, team. You're going to have a, a real laugh at this one. Right. I tease Navy all the time, yet the medication that I had to take, Sulafolk, 500 milligrams, it wasn't by mouth. Can you imagine being a proud infantry senior NCO 
and the doc goes, here's your medication, and it looks like it takes up Pablo Escobar's bloody um, uh, trafficking box, and you're going, what the hell's going on there? And you open it up, and they had to try and teach you how to how to do it. So it's basically you got to you, you've seen the Sphinx, haven't you, Kaz? I went, yeah, yeah, I've seen the Sphinx. I've been to Egypt, and they're like, well, you need to sit the same way as the Sphinx, right? You need to grip on to whatever you can hold on to, and you need to take your medication via your Jaxi. And when that goes wrong, sometimes you do a misfire, and then you can tear the inside of you as well. Okay. But that, but I'm just saying, this is when it, when I'm not firing on all cylinders, that can be why a combination of bad back, you know, claymore in the butt, as well as uh, other mental things. Also living in Sydney, wild teas and sailors. So it's all my own fault, I guess I'm saying. I think I'll prefer to be shot at than uh, see that again. Lee dog, yeah, well, it's great for me because I don't get to see it. I just get to see the after effects and clean it up. Kaz, there was a very important question up here by Spartan Mouth, and I would like the answer to it. Of course. Kaz, when are you posting your garlic sauce recipe? It's important knowledge that needs to be out there. Light on the garlic so you can slam it down fast. My garlic sauce, for any ladies that may be on there, is so good. Probably not now. They're swiping left on on Kaz. (laughs) Pretty car (laughs) records Christmas cards. Giuliano yells out medic, and good uh, good looking lady yells out kinky. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> um, that's my, a little too kinky for me, I think. <laughs> Rick, uh, Rock Hudson, um, Elton John. Uh, uh, anyway, my garlic sauce is so good, you could drink it as a food. It is so good, yeah, amazing. Because of what I also want to teach you is how to velvet meat. Have you heard of that before? Put a thumbs up down there if you've heard of velveting meat. You know how the food always tastes different when you get it from uh, the Chinese shop, Thai, etc. It's not because it's cat. You know, it's because they actually velvet the meat using um, using egg, using uh, self raising flour or corn flour. You know, some salt, etc. And and that meat it it breaks down the uh, it, yep. bro- it, it, it breaks down the meat yep. and it, it is velvet. Beautiful. Yep. Anyway. Okay. Um, Lee Dog asked, how often do Australian soldiers carry grenades or C4 type explosives on their person? When we carry our claymore, everywhere we go. That's interesting. Grenades, everywhere we go. Uh, when we go on operations as infantry, that's a really good point because tonight we're talking about equipment and weapons. I'm going to talk about some of the weapons we carry in a section you will not be carrying unless you're in an infantry section. Okay, let's start on the the basic soldier. EF-88, you're going to have that. You're probably going to have a 66, which is a 72 millimeter, you know, uh, and that's a a light armor weapon. You're going to have grenades, two of those in purpose-built pouches. You might have the Claymore M18A1 as well. On top of that, you're going to have an EF-88 or you're going to have a Maximite or a Minimite or a Mag-58. If you've got a gun, you've got 800 bullets, which can either be distributed amongst a section, normally not. Normally, it's carried by that person, right? Uh, On top of that, you may have... Okay, I hope you don't carry pistols on operations in the future. That's someone... I I believe it's people been watching too many movies, personally. Um... That's about it at the section level. Yeah, that's about it. You know, you might have an 84. You know, there is tripods that can be carried. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that is now a sustained fire machine gun. It can still be used just to be able to use that weapon system with an SF pin and extended ranges, right, using the buffer system in the tripod that gives it its accuracy over greater range, allowing you to manipulate the, uh, the theory of machine gun fire. By putting a C2 side onto that, that goes over into the realms of direct fire support weapons that carry four or more barrels that fire 20 round bursts. So the beaten zone becomes a pattern on the ground in a theory of machine gun fire that will nullify the enemy as an area weapon system. But you're also going to have now the organic weapon systems that will be carried on the 
mechanised or motorised vehicle, which will probably be upgraded to remote weapon stations as well, which means you can fire that, okay, without actually putting your head up and hearing the ting okay, when someone uses a lever-action rifle to shoot a porcelain cup that always happens in a Western. Notice no one ever gets shot. It always hits a cup first. I don't know. Never understood it. I think um, maybe Cold Llama didn't quite understand the answer from the question before about the weighted vests. Okay. Because they're saying if a weighted vest isn't a good idea, is it okay to purchase load carrying equipment and webbing and build no, that? No. Then go push I think they missed the point. Okay, you're going to have PDIs, okay, which are physical training instructors mixed with PT from session commanders. They're going to graduate your training to get you to a level where you meet expectations. So they're going to build, they're going to test your cardio from a diagnostic which starts in your pre-enlistment fitness assessment. And then there'll be BFAs when you first get to Kapuka. And then there will be hard PT to see how fit you are. And then from there, they will use a training program which has uh, forecast goals to get you to. We don't just go out there and say, we're going to do a 40 kilometer pack march today. You'll do a five kilometer and then a 10, and then a 15, and then you can do any distance after that because that series of fives with rest thrown in, and how is the fight in the dog? Yeah, I think the reason not to do it is because you might hurt yourself before you get there, right? And there's no benefit. Yeah, you're going to be adding strain to a body that if you do get the career you want is already going to have to put up with some strain. Mm. So it seems foolish to strain it or even risk straining it before you go and like you said there is going to be no benefit at it it's not going to make you any better at carrying your gear you'll you'll learn everything you need to know right yeah, that's right what we're going to quickly do here i'm going to quickly see if i can do this um and i'm going to get the photo in here of these said weapons so you actually know what we're talking about um because it's important no apparel apparel here we go Done, and let's move that one right up to the top. Wait two seconds, Lauren. Yeah, that's okay. How's everyone feeling? There you go. So if you look on there now, you can see in there, there's the F1 grenade, which is over there, the green one. Okay, then you've got above that is a Maximoy. Then to the left of that, you've got an EF-88. Below that, you've got the actual Kevlar helmet, which has the night vision equipment attached to it. Below that, you've got an 84. Beside that, you've got an Australia patch. And beside that, you've got a, uh, a 66, also known as the, the actual 72 millimeter. These are some of the standard weapons that can be carried on the human. The 84, not necessarily, but can be carried uh, or will be carried uh, as a choice for the, the standard infantry battalion, for that fourth section that can get attached, it will either carry those 84s or it will carry the uh, Mag 58s with tripods, etc. So what I'll do is I'm going to bring that down a little bit so that you can look at that. It's not every weapon system that will be carried by an infantry section, but it is important to note that that, okay, is some of the weapons you'll be carrying with 343 being the designation of actually uh, what your uh, what your ECN is. And remember that every single corps, whether it be support or whether it be a combat corps, has its own role, its physical role. And the role of infantry is to seek out and close your enemy, to kill or catch him, to seize and hold ground, or repel attack by day or night, regardless of season, weather or terrain. What that means is we don't sit on our hands and wait for trouble. We actually hunt for the bad guy. And if you're gonna hunt for the bad guy, when's the best time to hunt? It's when it's cold or extremely hot. It's when it's nighttime, it's when it's raining. It's when the other guy wants to find shelter and his discipline makes him make mistakes of not watching his six. And then we'll come up from the hardest route, Hannibal. That's what he did, used the Alps. You know, went through the swamps come from directions you least expected, marched all night, you know, and hit you from an angle you least expected. And that, do you know who else is really good at that? Wives catching you at the pub. <laughs> They'll come from a direction you least expect. There you are, you rat bastard. <laughs> um, and 
and if they don't come looking for you, worry about what they're doing at home. Yeah. Okay, here's um, Hyper Scaz says, anyone know if the armoured vehicle crew dismounts and does foot patrols like the infantry? No. They, they, they don't actually have those crews, mate. That's an army reserve thing, you know, the actual crewmen. But I believe what actually is going to happen is there's going to be... I'm not sure what CAV is going to do. I've got to find out more about it because they're losing uh, all of their uh, their uh, APCs. They're going to get uh, a fighting vehicle, yeah. But at the moment, even their lab is then going up to, is it the boxer that it's going to? Hasn't happened yet. Uh, and those plans, that could take 10 years. And if we are not, if there's no threat in the future... What can happen is the politics and and no one wants to be the person in charge that's spending that money may be reluctant to pull the finger, uh, the trigger on that one the way things are these days. Yeah. Okay. Um, Tasmanian Devil asks, Hi Kaz, is there much sun protection provided for the infantry? Well, this is that's a really good question and this is something that sucks. You know, something that really sucks. People that are overseas for six months, you might make a mistake and get sunburnt once, but guess what? You're a dickhead. You know, don't do it again. You learn pretty quickly. But we will have our sleeves down the entire time while carrying up to 70 kilos of equipment in areas as hot as Townsville or hotter, you know, rather than ventilate. And then you have all these skin rashes, etc. Your body wants and needs vitamin D. So we are so conscious of the damage that sun can do that what happens is we tend to overcompensate, sleeves roll down. Now you see people wearing gloves. There's never an excuse to wear gloves unless you're in armoured vehicles because if something happens, you need to be able to use those to be able to use exit hatches, etc., to get out. But if you're in, in the environment walking around atmospherically, if you wear gloves, your body will feel like it's 10 degrees hotter than what it actually is and for what? For no reason because you're too lazy to cam your hands up. There should be periods that are absolutely um, about administration, where a company goes to a location, platoon goes to a location, and a section without slapping each other's bums goes for swims. You know, learning how to survive in the elements. You know, they did it at Kokoda. They did it in World War One. They did it in World War Two. Jeez, there was times they were fighting in the trenches with no shirts on at Tobruk against tanks. You know, now it makes no difference. The mosquitoes bite us. They go, oh, it's because of mosquitoes. Yeah, well, the mosquitoes bite us anyway, because what do we do? The two times mosquitoes come out early morning, late afternoon, what do we do? Stand two. We go and lay on our tummy, on the ground, lower our profile, face out, don't make a noise. Platoon commander, platoon sergeant, get in trouble for laughing all the time. And then what we do is lay there and become a smorgasbord for mosquitoes and then get malaria. So that's all mood as well. <laughs> yeah, you and JP both have had malaria. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, oh, <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Stop yeah, I did. I loved it. You know, what? I thought I thought I was gonna. Yeah, but I was in uh, uh, I was in the hospital full of people from the second battalion, and yeah. we all had malaria. Yeah. You know, so was, you were yeah. laughing when your mate looked like he was having a seance. You know, go oh. wrong. Let's tick the likes if we can here too, team. Let's try and get this to over 100 likes if we can, eh? Exactly. We really do love it. And it does show the algorithm that, you know, we're, we're doing some stuff right. Giuliano said, would I be right in saying that sappers get to use more weapons and explosives than infantry? Never. No, that's not true. Okay. Nope. No, sappers, um, they, they can go for it nearly a year without using their weapons at all. You know, they're, yeah. they're a tool of trade. They're not a kinetic, they're not a kinetic branch team. Yeah, no, they do all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Like if it's a disaster, like the tsunamis, they'll be there with bulldozers yeah. and helping clean up and things like that, you know, so. They, 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 have, they have the power to return yeah. fire. Cool. They can be in front of infantry doing um, uh, uh, route clearance, etc. Yeah. But their job as soon as anything comes down range is to get the hell out of there. They don't, they don't go and engage the enemy. We use our assault pioneers that are also part of the SIB to do our breaching, etc. Can engineers be part of the breaching? Yeah, they can. But do we do it? Do they? No. Okay. Demio, yeah, they do that. Lauren and I both know some 
some people in some very bad situations that occurred with uh, catastrophic blast injuries. Yeah, yeah, you know? for sure. Okay, yeah. um, Aussie Veterans Fishing says, Hi, Kaz, it's Little Hallie from 2-4 Pipes and Drums. Hey! G'day, mate, how you going? Uh, mate, I loved the 2-4 Pipes and Drums. The leopard skins, you know, Inverbracky, you know, uh, Ringo. You know, seeing a thousand people marching and everyone going, get the hell out of the way. The Air Force getting told, fuck off, at the Strand when, when we'd get out of the buses yeah. to, to do the Freedom of the City marches yeah. on Anzac used, Day as well. I used to like it when they'd start playing um, ACDC. Lauren, were you ever in the RSL at Townsville when mm. the pipes and drums came in, how epic it was? Uh, yeah, I have been, Yeah. yeah. Aussie Veteran Fishing, do you remember that? What had happened is on Anzac Day, my birthday, by the way, team, that's how one of the reasons I'm in the army, I guess. You know, what would happen is you'd be drinking basically from 6 o'clock in the morning, you know, and you'd have been drinking the night before for Capion Day 3 hour, Old Faithful, God bless your socks. And um, you'd be having a really big time drinking that RSL dry, one hour and two hour in the, uh, well, two, four, in the same RSL, you know, circling around each other, you know. You know, wives have changed from 2-4 over to 1-hour wives, etc., going back and forth. <laughs> then you've got 3-4 CAV. Then you've got signals from 103 Signal Squadron. Then you've got 5 Aviation. You've got your engineers. You've got your artillery. All of these guys jam-packed in this place drinking alcohol out of the can. And then all of a sudden, brrrr, and uh, the imposters are always there as well. For some reason, you'd go into the devil's den. And then yeah. uh, the pipes and drums come in, and everyone is just like, yeah. just spellbound. They are so yeah. good and so yeah. taken for granted. You feel it in your heart. You feel it in your chest. Yeah. That big drum. It's so great. Okay, Iron Wolf's dad has a question. Do you get to learn how to make bombs in the army? No. We don't tamper up with ammunition. Oh, no, Sorry. <laughs> you can learn, how, um, and it's not hard, C4 explosives, you can throw it back and forth like it's bloody slime. No dramas and at all. Don't wipe it on your head. Otherwise, the <laughs> glycerine in it will give you a migraine that could kill a bloody... Just stay in the flags. Yeah, stay in the flags. Don't too much info. <laughs> but you can make, uh, you, you can make purpose-made uh, Bangalore torpedoes, etc., for the use of uh, using star pickets, taping them together with C4 jam back, uh, j jammed in between them. And then debts pushed in there as, as part of your courses. Pioneers do all that stuff too. Uh, makeshift explosives and crap. Um, but but it's not something we do. As it, as yeah. We don't no, tamper like, with ammunition. Yeah. Said, like John Paul said, pioneer course, you learn booby traps and stuff like that. So that might be interesting to them. I've had some uh, sticky socks thrown at me. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Here's your lunch, Clarice. <laughs> Go web. For those that can read behind the lights. Hey, Jay Hayes is here. I don't think I've even said anything to Iron Wolf's dad tonight. Or Jay Hayes. Bam. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, Westside. Yep. Okay. Not cerebral palsy. Jay Hayes. Ross River virus was a bad one. I'm going to tell you something here, Jay Hayes. This is dedicated to you and the Wolf's head's dad. Sorry, Wolf's head. Did I get that right? Wolf's dad. Sorry, Wolf's head. Iron Wolf's dad. Here's one for me that you can go and research if you want. Lauren, you're about to learn something here that's going to okay. blow your socks off. Okay. You, you mentioned Ross River. What is the Ross River also known for? Lauren, pop quiz. It's, 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 only, it's only four kilometres long, team. Four kilometres long. What's it, what's, it, what's it famous for, but? Um, for the virus? Nope. Um, how bad it smells in summer. Um, Racist. Yeah, cro crocs on the boat ramps. I don't know what. <laughs> the most amount of lethal shark attacks in the history of the world. Really? Yep. Is that true? The Ross River has had more than 10 fatal attacks, and it's only four kilometres long you know, in its history. Where And, and I, okay, I'll lie a little bit. The Ross River and the opening to Ross River. Hmm. There you go. I didn't know that. Yep. Most amount of fatal shark attacks in, in such a small area. Overflowing stage three pit. 
G'day, buddy. Don't jump in Ross River. People don't even know why they never swim there. They don't even realise. You'll be you'll be like run and bear. Don't be in the water. For those that know that one, little white dove did the same. You got cactus jacks on one side, mad cow on the other, staring at each other. And for some reason, when you walk over that bridge, no one takes a shortcut into the water, and no one knows why. And that's the reason is because there has been so many fatalities in there from crocs, drowning. There's been more than 50 drownings. Okay, there's been yep. croc attacks as well and yep. and, and nearly 10 and, shark attacks. And, and It doesn't look that good, really, to be honest. In parts it does, but then in other bits it kind of looks yellow and creamy and smells like butterscotch. Doesn't look like drinking water. <laughs> it doesn't look right in some spots. Mm. Okay, um... Flubber Dubber and Friends has a question. Mm. Hey, guys, who crews the RAR's vehicles? The sections. So what's going to happen now, instead of being eight men out on the ground, okay, that has the section commander there in one brick and the two IC in the other brick, what there will be is the vehicle itself will be travelling around as a tactical vehicle with its foxhound elements on the vehicle. At any stage, it can debus left, where everyone comes out and peels to the left, to the right or split, where a fire, part of a fire team goes out on either side. That vehicle has extended communications. That vehicle has firepower. The vehicle can be used for planning. The vehicle can be used for uh, fast um, advance or um, the reduction of um, small defences. Okay, left stick, right stick, etc. It can be used as an ambulance. It can be used as an elevated weapons platform. It... It, it is fantastic. The problem is there is uh, very restricted terrain for these vehicles that are unrestricted terrain for dismounted troops. You know, And there's areas where once you actually get used to the vehicles, then like the US in Vietnam, one, you can hear them coming, their movement becomes predictable, becomes easier to either avoid them you know, by going into hard ground to the flanks to those, you know, in the, through those green zones, or it can be easy to ambush them in defiles, areas that cause a natural choking uh, of uh, terrain that causes vehicles to either get close together, you know, but don't worry, there's tactics against that, you know, um, or make or bottlenecks where they have to go through in predictable environments that can be used to um, to target those vehicles, and that leads us on to one other thing that I'm going to quickly tell them about before we answer another couple of questions, there, Lauren. And that is, there's a thing called an ABF and there's a thing called a SBF. An SBF stands for a support by fire position. And what that means is it is a position where we use part of a call sign. It goes to that location. It has clear fields of fire onto an objective or onto a belt of land. When they are commanded, they will fire as part of a, a fire plan, etc. while a call sign moves onto that uh, call sign, etc. But with the weapon situ uh, systems that we have, not normally organic within this picture that we're looking at just here, okay, but normally at the support company element weapon systems, you know, whether it be armor defeating or whether it be machine guns for extended range, whether it be javelin for armor, armor defeating, whether it be 66s for light armor defeating or a combination of weapon systems, there's a thing called a ABF, which is an attack by fire. And what that will have is a series of targets that are on the hit list. And what would happen is, if they come into a certain area called TAI, Targetable Area of Interest, there is a delayed fire control order where these weapon systems are ranged on to that location, good to go, and they don't need any further orders. So it's a set move, a play move, etc. And they will be in all of these different locations, and then from there, the TAI will be engaged by a force from an attack by fire that needs no further orders whatsoever. Okay. Okay. So it's a lot um, more complex. It's not, we don't yeah. just play airsoft, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. Aaron Hazelton is off because he's going on a booty call. Have fun, Aaron, and use protection. And don't take a camera because that could get you in the shit. Yeah. Yeah, you know, unless, of course, it's already prearranged, then, of course, fill your boots. Mm. Okay, Atlas Hazen has a question. Mm. Hey, mate, for the assessment interview, based on enlisting as an infantryman, 
what rifles would they be asking me about or should I research more about? So it's a gear question. He's wondering, will they ask him about his knowledge of gear? Well, you know what? They won't know about them either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're you're going to be getting asked by people that haven't fired them outside of wets, I'd imagine. You know, so you can say that we have generic small arms weapons, which doesn't mean actually you small arms. Um, it means that they are weapons that are, are capable of firing around the 400 metres and back, and although they can fight at 500 metres, but their penetration is going to be low, even though the sight can get around there, it's still the same propellant that goes in the bullet. So you can say, look, we've got a assault weapon, like every other country has got, with an enhanced optics capability. Okay, We have a light machine gun or medium machine gun capability. We have anti-armour capability. These weapon systems, I don't actually know about that yet, partly because of Australia's gun laws. Okay, we're girt by sea. Favourite country, I still call Australia home. The red kangaroo, white. Okay, but you know, all I know is I have these weapons. I've come here because I want to learn how to use these. I understand they're a tool of the trade. I'm not a gun nut. But I do have to be proficient, and instead of a drill, instead of a nail gun, I actually use a kinetic weapon system that can reach out to given ranges that through technical training, these will be something I carry, something I implement, and use repetitive training to get the novelty out of that so I look at it for what it is, a tool of the trade. Yep. Um, okay. Um, sorry, I got distracted because Stoddy said he got he had some lightning where he was and it made him jump, and we were talking about um, storms. He's got so oh. skittish since he got into <laughs> medics. No, get out, because I love storms. I love it. But he's sometimes, just as scared of Melbourne storm. But, oh, you're so funny. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes we get, like, such a big clap of thunder that it makes the windows shake. And Kynan said um, we should see the storms they get in the Northern Territory. John O.C. John O.C., for starters, this one's for you, John O.C. This is a new one for you, mate. Not so, Carl. Oh, wait. One sec. I'll get that picture out of the way for you. This one's just for you, mate. Noxu Carl! Noxu Carl! I accept! Noxu Carl! Noxu Carl! Noxu There you go, I've got it on loop. Mate, thank you very much. Noxu Carl to you. You know, when you can get on, you can get on. I understand that it, it, there is no perfect time. That's why we actually stay on there for two hours. You know, because I understand that this might be during these tough times, you know, it's it's worth me staying on for two hours to make sure we catch this, okay? All we ask in return, you don't have to make a sick cow, the jaundiced cow, the yellow cow. First fleet, eat a vegetable, son. You don't have to, to throw that out there. And, and even if you're a vegan, you can put a cow in the, in the paddock. But what we do ask you to do is throw a like because I've just recently found out that what likes actually do is the thumb can turn blue and once it turns blue that means that uh youtube has actually picked up right out this is getting enough attention at the moment let's push that one up and allow people to actually see the video because it's not the quality of your video that determines if people see it it's youtube decides you could have the best and no one ever sees it yeah, yeah. um jay hay really liked that little movie i knew he would <laughs> Jay, we've got to keep moving forward for you, man. What do you think about the sultry looks of the of, of the gentleman below? No one's mentioned anything about that. Well, they've all got lovely eyes. You must have a thing for gentlemen's eyes, Kaz, because you've picked them all out very nice. They all have these piercing light eyes. They're just keeping me honest. <laughs> you need, one in the middle needs to wash his hair, though, but other than that, they're all looking... Why are you? Um, oh, sorry. The question too from from John O.C. Do you do a lot of uh, training of NVGs at Singo? Yes, you do. Um, quite often, the patrol um, routine can occur in open country, especially where we'll actually use our NVGs to move to um, to FUPs, move to uh, locations where we've got uh, open. Uh, fields of view uh, on, on a clear night with ambient light from the moon and we'll use uh, our helmet with the NVG attached with a counterweight on the back of the neck 
it still gives you a bad headache, team. It does. But the NVG is the, uh, it's an unfair advantage that we have over everyone else, especially with the night aiming device used in conjunction with it to be able to put rounds on the target via a laser. And if the enemy threat, okay, civilians, if they don't have night vision goggles or night vision capability, then you can stick with constant laser. So you can actually see all of the weapons they, um, as their lasers cross over each other. You can see where dangerous uh, danger zones are and arcs of weapon systems. So you can be cognizant of where everyone's weapon is pointing. And if a laser goes over you, you're not, you're not normally very happy at all. Yep. Um, Jody Stevens is just checking in. Lovely Jody from USA. Yep. And there's a flesh, there's a statement here that we must address. Aussie Veterans Fishing says, I can understand Jono not getting on much. I only got on because I had a heart attack last Tuesday. And again on Saturday, so now have time to watch your live stream. Well, we're really glad you're here to watch it. How, how old are you, mate? How old are you? It, you may not know, mate, but uh, heart is is a really big thing in my family. My my grandfather's watch is here. I never got to meet him, and they reckon he was the best of, of the family, the Caswells. Yeah, well, that um, was happening from 2-4, the, um, from the pipes and drums. Yeah, right. Mate, yeah, well, I'm sorry yeah. about that, mate. Yeah. Let us know if there's anything we can do. Yeah, of course. And, mate, you know, maybe this is the sort of thing that you need now to put things into perspective, to treasure life, but also understand that often when you end up with a bypass or something like that, and Stoddy can vouch for this, and so can most people that have had fathers that have had stents and stuff like that, you can end up having a better life because you got a warning about your heart and then the doctors go and clean all that shit out and all of a sudden you're back to barn dancing again. So, mate, hopefully this is a wake-up call for you. If you have any vice that you don't um, that you don't need, and this gives you a chance to engage with your family more as well and take things more seriously. Yeah. He's 48, Kay. 48? I'm 49. You know, you mightn't think about it with this mane of hair that some people have called... <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's almost unfair. Uh, Jody, lovely Jody. We put this video up here, uh, Jody. Before this was the introduction. I won't. I won't play the whole one. But John has just come on as well now. And Jody, I hope you're well, mate. You're one of my favourite people. You know that. The last two videos I put up, you could basically say were for you, Jody. I'd love to send you a rock. I've got the one from Ed B downstairs. You know where he went into the cold cave that looked like he'd put a mother-in-law in it. You know, to, uh, <laughs> but um, this is the the intro for tonight. Go on the red smoke. Mm, fix bayonets. It all become real for that kid. Hey team, here we go. It is Cats from the Trenches with Cats, and I'm here today to introduce you to the subject. High energy, red line, please. Red shirt. What is it? Bam, Judy first, new merch. Flag, which flag? Australian flag. What is it? Three, Get four, by three. This is a test shirt. What does it look like on the back, Kaz? You'll find out later if you keep watching. And you will. Guys and gals, this is the first time where you've actually got a choice to basically choose what is a priority for you. Is it being in the Army, Air Force, or Navy? <laughs> <laughs> or is it the core that you go for? Oh, can I go now or can I wait for what I want? Find the enemy and clear him from the high range training area using all the capabilities that we have. But understand one thing, who gets to play with all the toys? Well, it's always going to be those that are closer to the spear point. Those that are the furthest away from civilian equivalents, oh and uh, government uh, SOPs, etc. Same deal with Signals Corps, same deal with anything that's in an office. If you want to play with all the toys, the armoured vehicles, the weapons agencies, the missions, the adventure, the fun, the team, the tribe. The infantry, armour and aviation. And that is what we talk about in the Army as the combined arms team. 
then you need to get closer to the spear point. And when you get close to the spear point, you get more toys. And the people at the very tip of the tip of the spear are the special forces that have so many toys. They don't know what... Okay, we'll call that there because we're not about to talk for another two hours on that subject. Yeah. Um, we just wanted to put that out there for Jono so he got the hint of what the stream was about, you know. Um, I'd like to say to, to Jody while we're here, hold on, mate. Hold on. Is it going to be okay in another, you know, six weeks, etc., mate? Is it going to be okay? You, uh, common sense is going to prevail, all right? You know, you're one of my favourite people. You've been here for so long, you know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Jodie's great. It's always nice to see her comments, even if she doesn't make it to the stream, but she sure does. She does. Um, Pynan asked if there was any update on Roddy and Loretta. There is. Um, yeah. Did you want to tell them or should I? I you tell them. Well, the money went into their account. We, we, we put the $3,000 into their bank account. Um, what we also did was get back news that, um, you can tell them the rest, what's been given the, the okay. And they've actually been told formally the things that are going to happen for them. Can you explain the, uh, the pebble in the pond, the ripples that we made, what it ended up, um, occurring there from Lauren? Um, yeah, well, because it appears that, um, DVA has come to the table and is going to help Roddy and Loretta out with some things which is just awesome news and you know they're such good folk and they're so grateful for the community's help so thank you to everybody who came along and thank you to everyone who donated but thank you to anyone who came along or liked that um video or left a comment afterwards even if you didn't donate it was really nice that you supported us to support them just a quick summary, team. We found out the other day there was a person we we're going to do a marathon stream for. That fell that fell apart. Okay, that person was too proud, and at the end couldn't take the fact that he was going to be potentially looked at as a charity case. We got at a very short term a Josh, Josh. What's what? his name? Um, uh, Jeff. Shaffron. Jeff Shaffron. Jeff Shaffron. Yeah. Okay, pushed a name forward of of, of a family where everyone in the family is doing it tough because they're all trying to carry the casualty, so to speak. Uh, so basically what happened was we did an eight and, a, eight and a half hour stream, you know, which only had one interruption because we started talk a little bit outside the flags. From there, what occurred was the right people were notified of what was happening. And from there, what's occurred is not only did we raise the money and that's in their account, but they've been told the radio shack the one thing that poor Roddy, who is horribly crippled, you know, yeah. is unable to get to because they had no path, etc. They've now been told the path is get, is is getting quoted, and they're going to build the path for him. They can do it. Yeah, 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 they're going to do that so he can go there and talk to people where he's equal because he's on a radio. People like Ed B, for example. And what also they've done is because ambulances couldn't get in there, is they're going to come and look at his house at doing a whole driveway in his rural property so that ambulances as well as family cars can get in and out safely. On yeah. top of that, they've found out through some of my people that it went through the power companies that they are entitled to uh, guaranteed electricity because he needs a sleep apnea machine that he still can't use and his family actually does a watch over him to make yeah. sure that someone's there when he starts to choke, etc., yeah. and and have a hard time. They have pickets. Yeah, they have pickets. So now what's happening is they're also looking at what is going to occur with producing this um, uh, fail-proof electricity, which might mean the generator, which can assist with the uh, the medical respirator to keep him in some sort of level of sleep because he cannot remember, not just the day, but a year where he's had proper sleep. You know, he's actually snapped his teeth from gritting against the pain that he goes through and they can't give him more morphine or uh, or drugs because that will allow his heart to slow down to the rate that if he if he does fall into sleep he can actually his heart can stop. He can have 
seizures. So it's it's a fine balancing act and, and, you know, God bless them all. And especially Loretta, she is an amazing wifey and an amazing caregiver and she's a great friend. Yeah. Um, here's a really strange question that I don't think I understand at all, Kaz. Karen Chin has asked, what's the difference between a combat and security infantry or doing a trade in infantry? Okay, well, for starters, there is no trades in infantry. Um, security is what it comes under, the umbrella security. that That's CAV, that's armour, that's infantry. You know, that's the arms cause. It's not... It's not security as such. Okay, what it is is there's combat cores, and there is support cores. Support. What do they? What do they support? They support combat. They are the people that put the chicken in the box, and then the Uber is the one that takes that box and then delivers it to the people that need to do the eating, that are getting about doing whatever their job is. That was a really really poor explanation. The people that do the hunting, the fighting are the combat. The people that support them with weapons, with construction, with um, movement corridors, with air mobile evacuate, uh, uh, medical support, with intelligence, with communications, with logistics, they're admin. Okay? And there's also grey areas where people in um, support can actually be attached to infantry as well. Okay, but when your primary role is to seek out and close the enemy, to kill or catch him, season whole ground, repel attack by day or night, regardless of season, whether it's terrain, there is no grey matter. Your job is to find the wolf and twist his head in a direction that is against the thread. That's your job. Not to help, it's only to hurt. And hurt by kinetic means facing forward. Predator, eyes on the front of your head, not on the side. Yep. And who um, shares the line? Armoured core. Okay, sometimes engineers some of the engineers and also the the special forces community and aviation medical corps etc okay yeah. um will we be on for much longer no we've got uh three and a half minutes mate you know i was looking at those faces down the bottom mm. the first four all look quite weathered but the last one looks like a barista he does he actually looks very biblical it's like one of these kids is not like the other. Which is why he's looking at them and none of them are looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> he's exactly. looking at the wisdom on their faces going, what do those guys know that I don't? <laughs> now, imagine they're all at a piss trough at the moment. Why would We're, I imagine that? Well, 40 centimetres between them, this is what it looks like at eye level at a urinal. Just everyone <laughs> looking into it like, yep. And the, and the guy over there on the right is going... So uh, where's a good place to go, fellas? <laughs> and they're just looking straight ahead going, shut up, shut up, young fella. <laughs> All right, because um, I actually probably need to hop off. Okay, so do um, I. Do All right, okay, so shall we both go or I can hop off and you can keep chatting? Yeah, um, I've got uh, two minutes and 20 seconds left. Can we oh, get I'm some thumbs up, some hype in the chat for, for Lauren? She's got a diddy oh, mail. Thanks. I don't need any of that, though, but thanks, and I'll see everybody at the next stream. Thank you again, Kaz, for answering so many people's questions. It's an absolute pleasure. Oh, hey, John AC, welcome to the Great Unwashed. Guys, I, I'd love it if everyone was a member. You know, it's, it's awesome, but we'll take them where we can, and you know what? I'm going to throw you. I'm going to throw you a Natsukao. Anyway, mate. Natsukao. Natsukao. <laughs> Did you not laugh at that? I accept! That, that's for you, mate. Welcome there, Jono. Um, guys and gals, and let me just say something before we get out of here. I'm talking to you honestly. When I come on here, there can be ways that you can take the information, and if you really want to look at it in a way that you know that I don't mean, you can make it a competition. But I'm telling you, infantry doesn't look down on anyone else in the rest of the army, but a lot of people look on infantry, and that is because we are the spear point. All of the female lions will have something to say about the male lion who's laying on his back two kilometers away that comes over, gets what he needs, steals some of the kill, fills his tummy, and then goes on, and it appears like, well, what did he do today? 
But guys and gals, you must know by me being here that I'm in your corner for the right reasons. And the reason we talk about military mostly is because that's what you guys want to talk about. I'll talk about any subject whatsoever that you want to talk about. Yeah, and we do. You know, we've talked about a lot of interesting subjects, you know, club sandwiches, you know, in the epic stretch, we went through some, we went through some conversations. Yeah. (laughs) Hit the like team, black and white mechanical, just joined us on Patreon as well and has to get his Patreon number. You know, Jody's from the USA here. We've got uh, Mick from Japan. Who wants to jump back on you more again? We haven't seen Nick for ages. He didn't realise that we'd lost our other channel. He didn't realise oh, it had been taken down at nearly 16,000 subscribers. Yeah, and he subscribed again and he's still in Japan with the lovely ladies. Yeah, welcome back. Yeah. yeah. I've really got to go. So do I. Okay. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of the village and team. Tomorrow is going to be a day you only have one on your life. Hit the like. Enjoy. And let's get ready for the rest of 2020 to improve. But until then, we need to stick together as Sheepdog. Let's do it. The Global Channel, the best community in the world. See you later, guys and boys.